So, yeah, that was about comparing three or... Well, you can use it to compare two groups, but there's no reason to. So it's usually used to compare three or more groups. Of course, you might do those checks of the residuals, find the data are non-normal, and then you'll want to do a non-parametric test. And this odd-sounding test called the Criscoll wallace test is basically equivalent to ANOVA, except it works with the ranks of the data. So it takes no account of the scale of the measurements, and that's what all non-parametric tests do. They don't take account of the scale, but they work with the ranks of the data. And, and this is just an example of an analysis in Minitab using the Criscoll wallace test. It does a summary of the data, gives you the medians, and comes out with a p-value, which in this case is significant. So even if we assume that this, the gene expression levels are non-normally distributed, we still are able to show that they're significantly different. And you'll see the p-value is actually less than what we had before. I think it was less than 0 0.001 oh. before. So, sorry, it's less significant. It's a higher p-value. So this test is less sensitive in this situation where we have got data that are satisfactory for parametric test. Sometimes it might not be of interest to test this hypothesis that all the groups are the same. You might be justified in going straight to Mann-Whitney U-tests when you've got data and comparing just pairs of data to see if they're significantly different. And that's what you would do if you got a significant result. You would then go on and do the pairwise tests, which, because the data are non-parametric, would be Mann-Whitney U-tests. Comforting to know that there's an equivalent of ANOVA when you've got non-normal data, and most of the, even the basic statistical packages should have the Criscoll wallace test available. So we thought about the paired t-test when we've got paired data. Sometimes your three groups of data are going to be associated. Maybe you've got three measurements taken on the same animal. What we can do then, but we won't look at it this time, we'll look at it next time, is something called a two-way ANOVA. And so if you had three measurements, say, on one animal on three different treatments, you could take account of not only the effect of the treatments, but you could put the animal as a factor in the model, and it would then be called a two-way ANOVA, and that would allow for the expected correlation between the animals. However, if you're in a situation where you've got non-parametric data and you've got to deal with ranks, unfortunately, there's not an easy way to account for association between the groups, so you can really only do pairwise comparisons using the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Important always to consider transformations of the data because if you can get it transformed so that it's roughly normally distributed, that is a lot better and you can then use the ANOVA approach.